Hello, my name is Jason Musser and this video is to teach you how to do comic book lettering in Adobe Illustrator to my exacting specifications. Here's a quick look at um, a page from a story that I letter myself using Adobe Illustrator. It's a little hard to see because the page is not colored, but um, you can see um, speech balloons, the kind of font used, um, narration boxes, etc. Now let's go to Adobe Illustrator and look at a story I'm working on now and uh, show you how to draw a speech balloon. I'm going to use this panel down here. On this page I have taken basically all the dialogue and uh, plopped it in more or less where it goes. Um, first step is just plop it all down there and get it on the page so that I don't need to be jumping between this and uh, uh, word processor document to see the script. Uh, next step is to do what I've done right down here which is put in carriage returns and maybe center it um, so that um, it's, cons it's uh, compact and um, reads well in terms of where the um, line breaks are and things like that. Is in the right part of the screen where it needs to be and um, then once I've got it like that then I pop over here and I get set to draw the balloon. Um, what you need is the pen tool, this version, and um, you basically just draw a few points around. Whoa, whoa. How about that? Hey, hello, I'll do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, it gets a little hard here because you are covering up what you've done. Put another one here, draw the tail down to here. It looks like it's connected here, but I need to connect to that first one I drew to make it all work out right, and I'll show you why here. Um, okay, let me zoom in a little bit with uh, um, Apple Plus, um, and zoom back. My wheelie mount, my Nice mouse is broken, so it's a little hard to navigate around the screen. Okay, what's the problem with this speech balloon? Well, one problem is that it is black instead of white. You can't see the text at all. Um, how do we fix that? You select it and um, change these settings. This one is your fill. It's black, now it's white. Um, this one is your border. Um, the state it's in now means have no border around it. I'm going to turn on the border and make it black. There you go. Looking good. Um, if I deselect that, then you can see it's pretty good. Um, what I'm using for the border on this page is I'm using a one point stroke weight for the black border around there. Um, you know, of course, the depending on the size you're working at with your original artwork and your, your lettering, um, that um, that value might need to be increased or decreased, but for what I'm working with here, that's the right value. Um, to sort of calibrate the sizes that we're looking at here, um, I'm using 8 point as the font size for um, lettering. Okay, so I need to do some more work. Oops, I need to do some more work on uh, this speech balloon here. Um, first of all, I need to get it um, behind the lettering. The easiest way that um, that I know if to, to accomplish this is use a range, send to very back, which is going to send it back too far by one level, but um, usually quicker that way, and then bring it forward one. Bring forward. So there we go. It is now on top of the background art, yet underneath the, um, the text. So um, I'm going to move, scoot the text up a little bit. Uh, just select it and then I'm using the arrows. Uh, oops, there we go, that's good. Maybe that's back where it was originally, but anyway, use the arrows to move it around a little bit. Um, now I want to round these corners here. To do that, go to the pen tool, change it to the convert anchor point tool. So it looks like this, just this little wedge. And then um, when I've done that, the magic power of this unlocks is that I can grab any one of these points here and instead of it being a, a vertex like that, that forms an angle, it now becomes a, a magic um, round control. Um, so you can see it gives me, um, rounds the 
line segments connected to either side of that point. Um, I can rotate this, this handle control. Um, I can stretch it out to make it bulge more or bulge less. Um, I could twist it a lot to make, uh, you know, make a, a one side or both sides um, concave as opposed to convex, but I want it to be convex. Um, often what I want really is I, I, um, I need to adjust both the right side a little bit more than the left side. Uh, so once you've gotten that handle, um, you can break it into two separate handles by grabbing just one of them. And now you see that I'm, uh, I'm changing the roundedness of that line segment to the right, but it's having nothing, like no effect on the part to the left over here. So that part looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing on this guy, round it a little bit. Whoops, you got to twist it sometimes. Um, put it in a little bit. Uh, that one I can probably maybe get away with. Um, uh, I, will, I will grab this and change it a little bit. You know, I think my problem here, why this is looking kind of asymmetric in a way I don't want, is that um, this point's kind of at a, a bad place. Um, I'm, I'm going to say I want to move this um, this point up a little bit. The way you do that is you hold down shift and then use your tool here to grab that point and hold down and then you move it wherever you want. Um, so I'm going to put it uh, about here. This is going to be too big. I have some weird sort of um, snap to action happening here at the moment and um, you would want to figure out how to shut that off but I won't bog us down here. Keep converting those points to um, sort of rounded points. And nice and smooth. Uh, smooth this guy out. This is, I really don't like to have this sort of hook here. Um, I like it to be flat where the stem attaches. Again, my problem here is that I have some kind of uh, snap to action going on with this control at the moment, which means that it won't drop it exactly where I want it. Um, let's see if I can move this one up. Okay. Uh, make this rounded. Oh, one last one. And then the hard part is um, making both sides of this tail um, be concave in the same way. If I grab down here, then suddenly this goes all wonky like that. And, you know, it's convex on both sides. Um, but if I let go, grab just one, fix that. Uh, if I grab the other, it's kind of hard to grab. I kind of lost it here. What if I put this in there? But you got to be careful when using this. Um, tool because it is called the uh, convert anchor point tool so I had just unfortunately converted that anchor point back into not a roundy concave thing but um, into just uh, vertex okay there we go uh, the because of the length of this tail this effect is kind of subtle here but um, if the balloon could be closer to the speaker it would uh, it would look cooler. This, let's pretend that it is close to the speaker. Ooh. Got something crazy going on here. Grab this tail and fix it up. Uh, that's pretty good. Move this over a little bit. Make this more convex. There, the tail looks good. Um, okay, more or less um, what I want, um, it's a little too poofy, um, mostly down to the, the fact that that um, snap to action is on, on here. Um, this is not smooth enough for my standards. This is a little too bulgy up here. These I don't like to go down and back up. I like this to s sweep in and then be horizontal where this hooks up and this hooks up. Um, this, I didn't really mean to have this pinch point here, uh, it wasn't really intentional, but I kind of like it because um, if you didn't have this, obviously wrong thing, 
Um, having that little pinch there looks a little bit nice. Um, it looks like a, the kind of thing that um, a DC letterer would have done to make the balloon seem a little more interesting visually, or maybe just to make it be more interesting for him to draw, since he got to, to do um, so few creative things. But, uh, jazzing up the shapes of the balloons was about all that he was allowed to do. The Marvel guys wouldn't have uh, this extra pinch here. It would just be um, a rounded rectangle, mostly. So anyway, you, and you saw the um, you saw the magic of how you get the the balloon drawn in there. Um, let's see what else. Let's see. I'll take a quick look if I can get this to um, the previous page. Okay, here's a different page from the story. This is page three. It's a lot farther along than the page I just showed you. Um, you can see the, the top row of panels is pretty much done. Balloons look nice, they rounded, tails look good. Um, I have some emphasis in here. A quick note on this font that I am using. It is called Whizbang. It uh, is a pretty much um, spot on copy of the the lettering you would see in like 60s Marvel and DC. Um, it was one I had to pay for, but it was cheap and it's so much better than any free copy that I've seen that it was well worth it. Um, when you use this font normally, most of the time, you're going to use it in all caps, um, in regular, as opposed to the other two options, which are oblique, bold, and bold oblique, which arguably is really three options instead of two, as I had said. Um, when you want to use it for emphasis is the only time you'll do something different. And when you want to emphasize something, you, um, you don't just bold or just italicize, you do both. The convention um, that I noticed from old comics was uh, they did both, they bolded and they italicized. Um, so that's what I do to make uh, my stories look like more convincing copies of old stuff. Um, so you can see that in um, some of the text in here where I've picked out select words to um, help the reader um, help the reader um, get the, the, the flow and the emphasis of the dialogue, also just to break up um, chunks of dialogue that otherwise look kind of boring um, if they are all in exactly the same font and it's all caps and they're not bolted or changed at all. So um, that's how you do those things. Um, there's another example I want to show. I think I'm going to have to go back to my uh, web browser here. Um, here's an example of something that, uh, that you need to do. If um, you have an exclamation point at the end of um, a sentence, uh, probably that's where they're going to be is at the end, but uh, at the end of the sentence if that uh, text before it is just in the regular non-bold, non-italicized version, then uh, you type an exclamation point. Exclamation point is going to initially appear just um, as the non-italicized version is going to be vertical. Sometimes, depending on the letter before the exclamation point, if it's like a capital N or something, uh, it'll kind of blend into that letter and the user won't, or the reader won't see it. Um, so what I noticed in old comics is they always seem to make that exclamation point uh, italicized. So I do too. So you can see here, this is regular, uh, not italicized until the exclamation point. And that here and here, um, those guys are um, italicized to make them stick out a little more, be more noticeable, don't blend in to the previous letter, and uh, to look more exciting. Um, so that's about, um, that's about it there. Sometimes you will have to overlap um, speech balloons. Um, the convention I follow is that the um, speech balloons that represent text that is spoken first go on top of the stack of overlapping speech balloons. Um, balloons that uh, contain dialogue spoken after that um, go underneath. See that again here. Um, this is a good example of a narration box. Um, where I didn't want to just have all this empty space in the box. Um, sometimes you'll want to carve out 
um, a little chunk of the narration box that you don't really need in order to make sure that um, whatever artwork um, is being obscured by your narration box um, gets to show through as much as it possibly can. Here there was a little, nothing, there was like nothing behind here, but that's okay. Um, still better than just having the big empty space inside the narration box there. Um, very rarely do you use lowercase characters when doing this kind of lettering. Here's one, um, one of the rare examples. I've done something like that. Last thing to show you is, I'll show you the splash page for this story. Uh, splash page is you know named for the first page. Um, sort of serves as a separate cover for a story. Um, page one. Often shows a scene from later in the story when the story gets to a more exciting level. But um, they're kind of to grab the, the user and make them want to read the story. Um, sometimes for what I do, since now I uh, sell individual stories as ebooks, sometimes the uh, splash page becomes the cover. And um, with that in mind, I did a couple of things on this splash page, which is still very rough, but did a couple of things on this splash page that I wouldn't do inside, an, inside a normal story. Um, those things are, I used a thicker border around the speech balloons, here, I'm, if I uh, can successfully select it, you will see that I'm using a four-point border around the speech balloons. Um, that is, uh, that's because I, I noticed that on um, DC Comics from the 50s and 60s on covers, they use a noticeably heavier border on the, the speech balloons. They also use a different font than they do inside. They. Um, they have like a, a sort of taller, blockier font, which I, I could never find a good copy of. So I, if I had that, I would use this on the splash page, but I don't have it. Um, but the other thing that I've done here is I've used a more exciting, more of a title type font, um, but within uh, a speech balloon. It's uh, the name of this evil doctor here. Um, so I'll put it on there to make this, um, make this balloon seem uh, a little more um, exciting as the dialogue would be if it were, you know, if it were in a movie. Um, also, it's kind of cool because it uh, refers to this interesting looking character here, so um, it's kind of clear to, clear to the, the casual um, viewer of the splash page that, oh, that must be this guy's name. I see it's evil looking font, the evil guy, the forgotten. Okay, I get it. Um, up here at the top, I'm eventually going to have like some nice cool um, Title lettering. Maybe I'll also come up with a, a particular title for the story, other than just the name of the team. But uh, I've got a couple of cool fonts up here that I also bought. Bought. This is um, uh, these are from a company called Comicraft. This uh, one that League is in is like a copy of the DC Action Comics font. Uh, Comicraft calls it Atomic Wedgie. This um, cursive font. This nice cursive font from Comicraft. Also, they call it Spills. Um, so if you're playing around with lettering, what's the best way to do it? Here uh, I can see uh, I can see the title of the font. Uh, it's CC Atomic Wedgie Outline. Yeah, I can see that. It uh, tells me for sure. This list here shows me all the names. Painful to look at though, and painful to experiment with. What if I? Uh, yeah, I, I, what's the best way to um, look through the fonts I have and um, see how they look? See. A, if I can quickly find something that has the right feel for what I'm doing. Well, to do that, instead of the way I did it before, now go to the menu, go type, go font. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now you see alphabetical list of all the fonts on my system, but um, conveniently now, the names of the fonts are rendered in the font itself. So, um, the picture's worth a thousand words, and uh, that's what we are basically seeing here. All the Comicraft fonts, um, they start the names of their fonts with CC, um, which is a low-tech way of getting them all to appear in this list in, you know, in the same area. So I see them all right here. This is less kind of convenient because I'm generally going to be just be jumping between the Comicraft fonts for most of the fancy stuff I do, like titles. 